Well, Sunday, and thanks for clicking on to the 36th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. Before we get into today's video, do indeed check out all the content available here on YouTube on MarthaWinWeather.com. And of course, you can follow me on Facebook as well as Twitter. So do indeed check that out and subscribe for the latest weather content. Unique, uh, I would like to think anyway. But uh, we are going to look at the all what's going on around the world um, in terms of weather. And of course, there is always extremes. There is always exciting things going on weather-wise across the planet. And of course, we will look today at the El Nino situation and the prospects of a fairly strong El Nino as we progress through the course of this year. We'll look at tornadoes. Uh, the amount of snow that we've seen in the western United States has been remarkable. We continue to see the records fall. Uh, we will also look at, of course, the um, the potential uh, significant cyclone that is expected to hit northwestern Australia in the coming days as well, and the common chill that may follow this impact uh, on the Australian landmass in the coming days. So thanks for clicking on to today's video. Uh, I do hope you're having a good Easter weekend, of course. And uh, we will first and foremost look at the situation going on with uh, around the planet here. So this is the 2 meter temperature anomalies for the month of April. So far as of the 8th, or indeed actually the 9th of the month, so we've completed the first week of, of April and it looks as if it's a 30-50-50 with regards to the 2 meter temperature anomalies for the planet here. We've got a big area of cold across Mongolia, northwestern and western China. We've had a lot of heat across the uh, you know eastern and southeastern China of late. Uh, look at the chill that we've got over parts of Pakistan. India has been uh, pretty cold compared to normal. Africa pretty cold compared to normal. The European continent, we'll look at that in just a second in a bit more detail. Southern Australia versus a warm uh, northern Australia. We have seen a very cold western United States and northern plains. We've had warmth across northern Canada, cold across Alaska, warm across the, uh, the majority of eastern United States here. And it is pretty much a north-south split over the continent. We have got a warmer than normal Scotland and Ireland, Northern Ireland, versus a cold and average England and Wales. Uh, the bulk of mainland Europe is below average, Southern um, Scandinavia below average, warm and average across Spain and Portugal, as you can see here. The core of the coldest there compared to normal has been across uh, the Balkan region and into the Eastern Alpine region as well. So that's quite interesting. Looking at North America, and you can see here that we have got um, quite the contrast here between the eastern United States and the west, war warm across northern portions of Canada versus the southern prairie provinces, where, of course, uh, Winnipeg didn't see a, a day above freezing uh, during the entire month of March, which is pretty amazing, actually. Temperatures down close to minus 40 in parts of Quebec and late, uh, lately as well, which is quite interesting. So this is a tweet by our good friend David Birch, based in Walsall down in the Midlands. And he put out this tweet lately to say that the CFSV2, which he agrees with, the sea surface temperature profile looks to suggest a monster El Nino is gathering pace for the summer and winter of 2023-24. And a Eastern Pacific already measuring 1.9 degrees Celsius above average so you can see here in the image that the, the CFSV2 is indicating a pretty strong El Nino as we go into uh, the period. Really, you know, we'll have El Nino conditions by the time we reach the summertime. And then, as you can see, we progress through summer and into the autumn uh, time in particular. That is when it looks as if the El Nino is going to continue to gather pace. A strong, warm and eastern portion of the of the the you know the equatorial pacific i think would drive a fairly warm winter coming up especially with the fact that we're starting to see the approach of a, a solar maximum as well given the fact that the sea surface temperatures are record warm globally as well i think that we are going to start to see the temperatures jack up unfortunately globally in response to not only the sea surface temperatures but also the el nino 
that is developing and fast at that. So um, I do think but th this, remember, this doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to have a blistering hot summer like we've seen at times last year. And of course, 2018 was seen a very, very warm, dry summer for the British Isles and indeed for Europe. I'm very, very on the fence when it comes to the solution of the summer forecast. And this is something that I'm building. So I do encourage you, if you're interested in climatology, interested in weather, interested in knowing how we get to a certain forecast based on various parameters, sea surface temperatures, you know, rainfall distribution during the spring months can have massive impact on the atmosphere during the warm months of summer. So between June and August, of course, is the, 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 the you know, the statistically the warmest time of the year. And rainfall distribution can have significant influence because it can add moisture those wet soils can add moisture to the atmosphere and therefore it uh, can enhance lower than average pressure within the lower and mid atmosphere so th these are all aspects that we need to take into consideration while the global temperature may be uh, likely to be on the rise over the next 12 months in response to this likely imminent el nino doesn't necessarily mean that the, the UK temperature is just going to shoot through the roof and we're going to see another 40 degree day. I don't believe that we're going to see that this year. Um, and uh, so, yeah, stay tuned with regards to uh, the the ongoing El Nino situation that we're, we're likely to see. Uh, we're going to continue to look at that on the channel uh, in the coming weeks and months, of course, as well. So, you know, 18S is a, a cyclone that looks as if it's developing over the Team War Sea between Indonesia and Australia. This looks as if it's the latest track off the GM, JMA model and uh, you can, or the, the JTWC, which is based in Japan. Looks as if it's going to become a fairly strong cyclone. So some of the models are actually indicating a Category 5 cyclone making an impact on that northwestern coast of Australia. Uh, in the coming days here and that can have massive impact with regards to of course wind as well as flooding storm surge and whatnot so uh, going to have a and keep an eye on that in the coming days and we'll look at the impacts that has had next week in the 37th edition of the global weather and climate report so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that um over the course of the next few days here this was the scenes like i promised that we're, we'll talk a wee bit more about the situation with the tornadoes it seems as if every weekend we'll have devastating tornadoes impacting the southern half of the united states up into the midwest this was rolling fork in mississippi this is a, a video um that has been streamed by accuweather showing the the devastation that uh, that these tornadoes have had. So while we've had systems coming in off the Pacific Ocean impact in California, the Western United States, increase in the snow totals, uh, well beyond what we've already achieved with regards to records. The you know once these features move across the Rocky Mountains, they then draw warm, humid air out of a very warm Gulf of Mexico, which I believe is record warm, and they. Uh, what happens is we've got this clash over the mid Mississippi Valley that then uh, provides severe weather. So large hail, damaging winds, flood and rainfall, and of course tornadoes has been uh, quite mm -hmm. severe during the course of this year. Uh, you know, through late March and the early portion of April, we've seen some tremendous damage caused by these tornadoes in several u.s states anywhere from uh you know parts of uh, mississippi all the way up into iowa where we've seen um you know significant look at that there that's just remarkable a car just it looks like it's just sheer devastation you know communities wiped off the face of earth with wind speeds in excess of 150 200 mile per hour so Rolling Fork in Mississippi has been a, one of the hardest hit areas that we've seen so far this severe weather season in the United States. And uh, what's remarkable also is that um, on this day back in 1947, uh, arguably was, um, uh, you know, so April 9th, 
devastating tornado. This is a uh, from t- Tornado Talk on on Twitter, talking about a uh, tornado family moved uh, from five miles northwest of Pampa, Texas, to near St. Leo in Kansas. So the entire town uh, of Glazier and much of Higgins destroyed at Woodward. Oklahoma, at least 107 people were killed, mainly in the northern half of the town. So people, you know, and debris and items can get blown from one state to another when these tornadoes are of AF5 strength and indeed in excess of a mile wide. The de- the, the, the power um, attributed to these uh, tornadoes can be just absolutely mind-boggling. So it has been a tough year so far for folks in this region of the world with regards to severe weather. And let's hope that conditions do improve in terms of that tight temperature gradient starts to relax and the dynamics within the atmosphere, um, you know, starts to go away. Um, So, yeah, so that's the tornado aspect. Of course, the uh, snowfall aspect has been nothing short of remarkable. Alta Ski Resort, just the south of, uh, Salt Lake City in Utah has seen an excess of 873 inches of, of snow for the season after more than two feet fell from the latest storm. This is by Tom um, um, Nizol, uh, Nizol, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, but we're basically approaching the 900 inch mark uh, beyond the record uh, set in, in Alta, Utah for snowfall. Mammoth Mountain is now sitting with a, a main lodge depth for the, the season of, of 705 inches. The summit has seen nearly 900 inches of snow as well. So, and with a snow depth, a current snow depth of 256 inches. Just amazing stuff, isn't it? Looking at Australia, of course, we need to watch time as per usual because I only have a 15 minute window. You can see here that. Um, I, you know, after uh, the cyclone makes impact in the northwest Australia, it looks as if we are going to see a significant spell of cold developing across much of Australia, as you can see here. Um, you can see it coming in from the western half of uh, of Australia and then sweeping across the continent, as you can see here, before warmth returns after. But a fairly significant wave of cold looks as if it's gathering pace once that cyclone makes impact. On uh, on Australia here, looking at the um, you know remarkable stuff that's been going on around the world at the moment here. First cold weather in South Australia, East Australia. Remember, we're getting closer to the this is autumn, of course, in Australia, so we're getting closer to the winter season down under. Uh, but um, on Friday, Townsville. This is off, of course, uh, Maximilian Annuals Her- uh, Herrera. That's his Twitter page, of course, looking at global extremes as per usual. Uh, on Friday, Townsville in Queensland had a minimum of 26.6, which tied its highest ever April uh, temperature for the month of April. So uh, some extreme heat still across the northeast, despite the fact that we've got some cold coming into the western and southern half of Australia, as you can see here. Uh, extreme heat, 42 degrees in parts of Egypt. Records falling here. Remarkable uh, temperatures across China where we've already seen 40 degrees Celsius in the south for the first time this year. And for the past two years, heat records in the hundreds have fallen every month over the last two years in Australia. So, of course, that will be getting all sorts of attention. Uh, We've got, of course, heat across southwestern portions of Europe. Um, So, yeah, uh, I'm running out of time, unfortunately, because I've spent a lot of time talking about what's been going on around uh, various parts of the world with regards to Australia and the United States and whatnot here. Let's have a quick look at Thierry Goose's uh, Twitter feed here. So um, Botswana, 38.4, a new April record here for this African nation. Of course, uh, we've had remarkable, look at this here, 37 million years of freezing rain on, on Montreal. And it was something that resembled, so the amount of damage that was caused by the freezing rain in parts of Montreal was resembling the 1998 ice storm, which, of course, is one of Canada's worst natural disasters. Ran out of time.
do check out um, all the social media pages 